Welcome to another RH Crew Reaction video. I'm Shorty P. I'm Duke. Today we're going to be reacting to Ultramarines Explained by an Australian number two, uh, Girly Man's Resurrection. <laughs> That's funny. What else did he call him? God, I can't Give remember. Give him my hand or yeah. something like that. I went back and rewatched it just because it was so funny. It was funny. And uh, I, it was like every time he said his freaking name, it was something different. He fucked it up every damn time. Uh, so it was uh, that was fun. Uh, I can't wait to see this, uh, Gilliman's Resurrection. Yep. Um, I was watching something else about it the other day, so um, he gets, uh, there's two people that resurrect him. Uh, one of them, he may or may not be uh, given the, uh, his own blue smurf to on the regular. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he mm. might be, he might be smurfing from time to time. <laughs> you know, that's smurf-tastic. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll, uh. We'll see about that. Uh, please, while you're here, like, subscribe, and comment. Um, also, consider heading over to patreon.com slash rhcrew. Uh, there you can subscribe for bonus content and early access to our reaction videos. That's right. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started on this one, though, because uh, I can't fucking wait. Mm. G'day, guys and girl. Last week, we took That's a right. look at Just our poison girl. blue. That's right. Sussing out their origins, actions during the Great Crusade, as well as the Horus Heresy. Now, as the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy were basically one big phallus sucking session for the Primarchs, mm -hmm. the law around the actual legions take a back seat. However, post Heresy, all the Primarchs have either become hentai monsters, run off into the warp, been killed, or they've just gone into a coma. Hence, it was the Space Marines' time to shine. And shine they did, as despite their God Emperor being technically dead, their fathers dead or missing, and new terrifying enemies like the Tyranids and Necrons emerging, as well as the new threat of chaos, the Imperium remains somewhat functional. If you haven't seen part one of this video where I talk about the Ultramarines and Gullyman pre Horus Heresy, then I highly recommend you check that out first. As before, we don't like to go for the basic shit jokes on this channel, so we take it one step further. Hence, no Ultramarine shall be known as Smurf or Papa Smurf, as that joke was never funny to begin with. Let's get into it. It was a little funny to begin with. Leading off from funny. last video, Gulliman has had his <clears throat> throat penetrated by Fulgrim and is now in a very uncomfortable upright position coma. The age of the Primarchs is over, and now the Space Marines gotta step up. Except that nothing really happens for like 10,000 years. <laughs> the Horus Heresy happens, then all the way until the 40th millennium, literally nothing happens. Like, there's the rise of the Ecclesiarchy, and then there's a bunch of pedos with pointy hats, and then a bunch of religious Desius. bullshit happens, but it barely involves the Arr, space religions. <laughs> as the Marines continue to kick Xeno ass and let the High Lords just massacre each other. A good recap of the bullshit that happens in 30k gets nicely covered in if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device, so... Yeah, it's basically just the Imperium decaying into a technologically stagnant, superstitious feeding ground for chaos. The Ultramarines and their intense awesomeness are flung back into the spotlight with the coming of the Tyranids. You might be sitting there like, oh yeah, our Ultra Wanks are going to squash them bugs. However, the Ultramarines had lost something. Something even more valuable than their Primarch. Matt Ward. I'm gonna say the no writer. No longer would Matt stroke his neck beard and ultra jizz onto our delicious blueberries. Logic and reason had returned in full force, and the Ultramarines were about to suffer a mighty blow to their scrotums as they <laughs> faced off against the space bugs of death. The Ultramarines, led by Myonius Kalgar, fortified the tits out of McCrag and recalled thousands of Astartes to come up as well, as well as multiple Titans. They literally could not have been any more prepared, even if they wanted to, and yet the High Fleet Behemoth came like a tidal wave, washing away the Ultramarines and slaughtering their armies. Kalgar himself got completely emacerated, losing his limbs and only surviving due to the sacrifice of his honor guard. It was only through some Ultra Cheese in the form of a warp drive detonation that the Ultramarines achieved survival and destroyed the Tyranid High Fleet. Sensing their plot armor fading away, the <laughs> Ultramarines were humbled, yet still proud as hell. An unexpected byproduct of not being Mary Sue's meant that the Ultramarines were suddenly becoming likable. Still a meme for sure, but a welcome one. Their pride and honor became an entertaining staple of their personalities, not just a leftover wank of an overzealous Games Workshop writer. The Ultramarines became more flexible with their adherence to the Codex Astartes, a book written by Gullimon on how to be a good little space marine, hence begun having more success in grittier and more flexible warfare. 
With the Ultramarines decimated, it was up to the fourth company to secure Ultramar, as various Xeno scum had come into the region to take advantage of its lack of defenses. The fourth company brought down the Panos sluts before traveling the galaxy. He's got the helmet. So many yeah. Xeno cheeks, it made Slanesh blush. They killed Tau. <laughs> they killed the Croods. They killed Greenskins. They did avoid killing Elder, however, as of the That's nice. The Ultramarines loved them some. Big to the elder girlfriends. Hell yeah. It was about this time that Uriel Ventress rose to prominence in the fourth company due to his supreme ability to kick ass, and he also held quite a lot of plot armor that the Ultramarines revered so dearly. Now, the Codex Astartes isn't a bad book in terms of tactics. It was written none other than Gulliman, who was a beast when it came to military strategy. The problem was, well, it, it was a bit outdated. It's six times older than the Bible, and it did not take <laughs> well, Tyrion's or Necrons into it? account. Mm -hmm. Hence, with Ural and his company facing a massive array of different threats, he had to bend the rules a bit. After commandeering a Death Watch squad and injecting the Tyranid Queen with a deadly strain of AIDS, he had once again <laughs> led his company to victory at massive cost. Upon his return to McCrag, all the boomers were like, not just You're sure. a heretic. I'm and HIV even Calder positive. was like, Listen here, you little shit. you defying a holy ultra wank book now you must die via suicidal mission hence uriel went on arguably the most horrific quest ever now if you've seen luton's video on the homok you know fuck i suck pronouncing shit yeah, you do. Probably because i just misspell everything in the script i just make my life really hard <laughs> then you know what i'm talking about but basically uriel was taken into the eye of terror and inserted into a giant vagina of some poor woman who was basically pumped full of steroids until she'd eventually explode Damn. and new Chaos Marines would claw their way out of her. It was seriously fucked up. The artwork's disgusting. I highly recommend you don't look it up. I'm just gonna. that the Eye mm -hmm. of Terror, but doing some questionable shit along the way, Yuri was captured by the Grey Knights, who mind-raped him to see if he was corrupted by Chaos after being literally rebirthed. Surprisingly or unsurprisingly, if you know anything about the Ultramarine characters and their plot armor, Uriel was free of chaos and returned to McCrag, where he then got mind raped again by the Ultramarine Librarians. Bastard. Uriel retook command of the Fourth Company. The Iron Warrior commander who was in charge of the uh, um, Daemon Knurbla, aka Vaginas, <laughs> experiment was understandably <coughs> pissed that his gargantuan <coughs> badges had been decommissioned, hence he swore revenge against Uriel making an evil clone of him and enlisting the help of a demon prince. He gathered a fuck huge army of demons, mercenaries and chaos marines to attack Ultramar and get revenge. But well, you know, you don't just attack Ultramar, my dude. Right. Just because Matt Ward isn't there to suck them off anymore doesn't mean they still aren't the greatest marines in the galaxy. The demon invasion was massacred and Uriel once again maintained his status as a total ass kicker. Some years later, Abaddon the shit cunt who took 13 crusades to find Fuck the Death Act, destroyed Cadia, which was very bad for the galaxy. Fleeing Cadia was everyone's favorite mechanical hentai monster, Belarius Call, as well as his merry band of pretty cool characters, including mm -hmm. Saint Celestine, Inquisitor Greyfax, Yvrain, right. and the Vistrach. For the past 10,000 years, Call is it Call was tasked to try and figure is out how to bring back Gulliman back to life. <laughs> and he finally had all the pieces he needed, hence the group headed back to McCrag. Abaddon was suspicious that such a distinct and unusual group of protagonists was heading towards a loyalist Primarch, hence Abaddon then launched a massive invasion to McCrag to try to stop them. The group reached Kalgar, who was suspicious of why they were all teamed up with Elder and shit, but with the world about to fall, he decided he had to let them through. They performed the ritual and G-Men came back to life at the last second. Now the way I say it makes it sound really unimpressive, but in the book it's dope as fuck. Basically what happens is, he, he stands up and everyone stops fighting for a couple seconds. Everything goes quiet and, and he's just standing there and it's like the god is back. And then the silence is broken by some Cornite berserker who goes full Leroy Jenkins mode <laughs> and jumps at Gulliman and Gulliman just swats the cunt. He then just full balls to the walls, charges into battle and kills everything that resembles chaos. Right. Very cool. Very cool. Gulliman retook command of Ultramar and assembled a mighty fleet in which he intended to use to get back to Terra with. However, Magnus, the only Primarch who was a bigger fucking nerd than Gulliman, decided he wanted to kill our beloved Aryan overlord. Hence, he threw a massive warp storm out there and periodically raided the fleet with demons and negative emotions. <laughs> negative Elder emotions. to aid Gulliman by directing him through the storm. However, Karos Fateweaver was able to capture the Primarch and his warriors and lock them away. Hmm. Very sad. 
However, the plot continued on as Cypher, the random fallen Dark Angel, frees Gulliman and friends on the condition that he be allowed an audience with the Emperor. What begins is a mad dash by Gulliman and friends to get to a portal leading to the Moon of Terror, whilst Magnus chased them. A big battle was fought upon the moon, as Gulliman and his survivors had to hold off Magnus off long enough for the Elder to seal the warp gate off. Gulliman faced Magnus in single combat, which is a pretty ballsy move by him, considering that Magnus was a demon prince primarch, infused with shitloads of magic and warp stuff. <laughs> Gulliman showed us just how big his balls were, as during the fight Magnus burnt him with warp fire, threw a building at him, and was just an asshole about the whole thing. <laughs> in return, Gulliman broke his jaw with a fat left hook, right. and survived long enough for Magnus to be banished. After the battle, Gulliman was like, okay, big, big, you know, crusade to get home. Had to fight my brother. Let me just take a breather for a bit. But Korn was like, suck me off, G-Man, and launched a <laughs> fuck-huge invasion of terror that was hard and fast, killing shitloads of custodians. However, they were defeated by G-Man and his pals. Gulliman then went and had a heart-to-heart -heart with his dad for an entire day. Now, we don't know what was actually said between the two. However, there is a fan-made story of their conversation, which is so hmm. good that everyone who read it, it basically just considers it canon. I'll link That's it in the description, but basically the Emperor greets Gulliman with joy of a returned Primarch, but also expression of disappointment and frustration with, you know, how everything's turned out. It's a great read. Gulliman takes his father's sword, which ignites it with fire in his grip, and he declares himself the Big G, before leading a massive purge of terrors, chaos cults, and xenos. No one was safe as Gulliman had a no-bullshit tolerance policy. Nobody, not even a High Lord of Terror, could stand in his way. There was an extremely rich and influential politician that tried to hold his assets ransom against Gulliman to try swindle him. So Gulliman dragged the man into the streets and had him flogged. For context, <laughs> nice. this would be like if Jesus came back to life and dragged Trump by his saggy ball sacks into Times Square, <laughs> then beat the shit out of him while everyone watched. <laughs> Gulliman then activates Order 69 and awakens Cole's master project, 69. the Primaris Marines, who we all know and love. From terror, armed with a flaming sword bathed in disgusting levels of psychic energy courtesy of his disabled daddy, backed up by a metric shit ton of Primaris marines, Gulliman launched the Indominus Crusade, which was the largest gathering of Imperial ships and warriors since the Great Crusade. Oh, wow. See, the fall of Cadio torn the galaxy in half and allowed demons and chaos to rampage everywhere, destroying countless planets and killing trillions of people. And boy oh boy did this guy put on his Bob the Builder hat. <laughs> the Indominus Crusade tore across the galaxy, massacring chaos wherever it found it. Gulliman had organized the crusade to a T. Everything was planned out and perfect, and it showed. As the crusade continued to anally penetrate the warp, various small battle groups were deployed to each loyalist chapter and provided them with Primaris reinforcements. Some of these chapters were like, Thank fuck, bro. Give me some of that. Right? Some chapters were like, we don't like your kind around here. <laughs> However, even the most stubborn chapters eventually accepted the Primaris reinforcements when the custodians rocked up and said that the Big E wanted them to have Primaris. Fair enough. During the crusade, Kalgar entered into a duel with Abaddon and was somehow able to hold his own against him for a time, only seemingly losing because Abaddon and his max level legendary gear, whilst Kalgar is still grinding to get past mid-level epic gear. Right. <laughs> Despite both of his hearts getting pierced, Kalgar walks it off and survives the encounter, which is pretty stupid, as it would have been a good time for him to die, <laughs> especially since G-Man is back running the oh, Ultra Show. Come show. on, man. Kalgar doesn't die. Eventually, Mortarion and his Death Guard Badass. attack Ultramar, which pulls Gulliman's attention away from the Crusade. Gulliman declares the Crusade complete and allows the Imperium's armies to disperse across the galaxy and continue retaking planets, killing anything that had a tentacle. Gulliman bolted back to Ultramar, and one of those classic Games Workshop wars happened where despite massive casualties and death and widespread conflict, nothing actually happens. <laughs> Gulliman rocks up, retakes territory, kills some no-name greater demons, has a duel with Mortarion, and then Mortarion gets recalled by Papa Nurgle to go fight against the other Chaos Gods. Kind of lame to be honest, Primarch fights are so rare these days considering there wasn't any loyalist ones for ages, so it's good to see some mm. impact when they do encounter each other. Mortarion at least deserved a good kick up the ass for being a whiny little bitch all the time. You would have thought 10,000 years was enough time to get over his daddy issues, but I guess not. Now, no Ultramarine would be complete without I, Kato Sicarius! 
Old mate Kato continued his cheese and survived everything that was thrown at him. But of course. He was present for the resurrection of Gulliman and accompanied on his way to Terra, being one of the few people to survive the horrific journey. After Gulliman spoke with the Emperor, Kato was commanded to return to Ultraman and help sort some shit out. Kato's ship got lost in the warp, and the forces of Chaos attempted to perform hentai on him. <laughs> but this is Kato, motherfucking Sicarius. We're he talking don't fucking about take here. that. He don't play the that best shit. Best Ultramarine ever. No, the best Space Marine ever. Hmm. And he survived the warp and returned to Daddy's side during the Indominus Crusade. Gulliman was like, "God damn, this guy's a little fag." And he did his best to teach Kato the ways of not being an obnoxious little asshole all the time. These teaching combined with Kato's mental trauma and survivor's guilt from his time in the warp has helped shape him into a somewhat likable character. Which means he'll probably get killed off soon. Yeah. yeah. Bummer. The Plague Wars are Gulliman's most recent escapade and he hasn't been explored much in the Psychic Awakening yet. Gulliman's next challenge, however, should not just be another demon Primarch or Xeno threat. No, his next challenge needs to be the return of another loyalist Primarch. Vulcan, the Khan, the Lion, Korax, and Lehman are all probably alive and could return at any moment. Hell, even Rogel has a good chance of reappearing. The return of a brash and intense Primarch, such as the Lion or Lehman, could be interesting, as they would be extremely disgusted with the state of the Imperium and may not agree with Gulliman's policies. Other than the obvious hype of return Primarch, this would present a fresh original threat and give the story more interesting options on how to proceed. That's interesting. For this, I'd love to see mm -hmm. the lion return as I think it would fit best in with creating a conflict cool. with Gulliman, as well as exploring the present day Dark Angels who have done basically fuck all. And that does us for today, guys. Over the course of two videos, we have explained who the Ultramarines are and what they're up to. I'm pretty happy with how the first video went, so if this video gets 20,000 views, I'll continue doing these deeper looks at some of our favorite Space Marine chapters. If you want to support the channel further, then Patreon is the place to go. Only $1 a month gets you access to lots of exclusive content and a bunch of hentai. If you want to <laughs> chat to me or play some games, then jump in my Discord server. Links will be in the comments and description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. That was good. Peace. Very good. Uh, I now have questions answered. <laughs> Same. Um... Uh, so like I was saying, uh, they didn't really, I thought maybe he'd focus on it, but, or say something about it, but the one, uh, Eldar called Evrain is the one that Gilliman's supposedly plowing on the regular. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Who doesn't love big titty Eldar? <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't know he did all that shit after he came back. Neither did I. Like, I thought it was kind of something that just happened. I didn't know that they had gone through all of that already. No, nah, I had no clue. That's why I watch these things. Cause I learned shit. Yeah. So that was badass. He sounds like a badass. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like he does badass shit. Because, you know, I mean, you know, he is the daddy of the Ultramarines. Ma yeah. So that's what it is, you know. Gosh, man, I don't know what else to say. That was fun. That was that was interesting. It was fun. Still a lot of laughs. Yeah. I, I think I need to learn more about Cato Sicarius or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I have seen a couple videos pop up talking about him being sucked into the warp. So I was like, oh, shit, is he dead uh, evidently I guess not. not yeah yeah <laughs> uh, unless, unless there's been something that's happened between now and whenever this video was made so uh yeah i i doubt it this video is not that old okay um so that must be what they're talking about so yeah i do kind of want to go check that out and see what happened to him oh yeah uh and kind of figure out why what the deal is with him because obviously uh the way they treat him in the tts episodes like mm -hmm. It like People have total... feelings about him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? What a dick. What a, what oh, a... I can't carry us the greatest of the Ultramarines. Of it, and I had no part in that loss. I was always doing something so awesome. <laughs> oh, I can't carry us single-handedly captured Magnus, the traitor's primord. Right. You know? Yeah, some shit like that. It's pretty fucking funny, though, I gotta say. I think, it's, I think it's just, I don't know. You know, you... I mean, there's always been that one overpowered person in a bunch of different like things, and you're like, why is this person overpowered? They're not even a prime <laughs> right. mark, or they're not even like a demon or an angel or whatever, you know? It's like they're just the, I mean, which is a big deal. They are an ultramarine or whatever, but they're not the highest of the high, but they're able to do the same thing. So right. to me, it's like, you know, you got somebody that's still trying to, you know, work his way through that mid-level epic armor. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess they. I guess they had to... I guess after they realized that they had gotten rid of most of the loyalist Primarchs, they were like, "Oh, what do we well, do crap. now?" Because yeah. like there's a there's a you know several 
uh, traitorous Primarchs that are still alive. Yeah. So it was like, well, I guess we got to come up with some other badasses for no reason, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess that's what they did. I don't know. I could be wrong. People will tell me if I'm wrong. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in for another uh, reaction video. This one was good. It was great. Uh, please go subscribe to uh, Major Kill. Uh, support him. Uh, he does great work, so go check that out. Um, also, while you're here, please like, subscribe, and comment, as please. I said earlier. And uh, also consider supporting us on patreon.com slash rhcrew uh, for early access to reaction videos and bonus content and other fun stuff. And with that said, we'll see you next time.